Imagine boosting your net worth by almost 50% for doing just one critical thing. It's not investing, it's not budgeting, it's communication. Warren Buffett was once asked some advice that he would give to new graduates. Do you know what his response was? He said to invest in yourself and the one thing that you can do that would make you worth 50% more than you are now at minimum was to hone in on your communication skills. In this video, I'm going to show you how honing your communication skills can have a massive impact on your financial success. Something you're interested in? Well, stay tuned. So I actually had this idea for this video when I was at another conference earlier this week. And what I noticed was people were taking longer than the allotted time that they were given to speak. And it was actually at a particular meeting where each of the committees and the officers had to give a report. And it was stated at the beginning that everybody had five minutes to give their message or their report. And then they gave the outgoing president 10 minutes, but everybody else had five minutes. And it was very interesting how many people went over their time limit. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put that out there right now because I did bring it up the next day under the pointers or things that we could do better, is if somebody gives you five minutes or 10 minutes to speak, use your time and then sit down. Anything over that is rude because you're taking away time from other presenters that were also on the scheduled program but now are unable to go because you went over by your allotted time. So let's jump into some of these pointers. Three things that I want to cover in this video is how do you actually have effective communication in different professional settings, the impact of respecting other people's time, and then having very good clarity in your message. So how do you respect the allotted time that you've been given, whether it's five minutes for a report or a 30 minute uh, speech or presentation that you're supposed to do? Number one, you just can't go up there and say, oh, I'm just going to go with it, the flow, and I'm just gonna go and just talk off the top of my head. I'm gonna read off these slides without having your content actually planned. So you wanna plan your content. Practice brevity. There's a book that I've got linked in the description below called The Art of Smart Brevity. And it's all about how can you say the same thing with less words, okay? So removing all of the fluff, removing all the things and the words that don't matter, and just getting to the point without losing the message. So I encourage you to pick up that book and think about it when next time that you're starting to talk or you're starting to present or even when you're starting to write. Think about how can you eliminate some of the words but still not water down your message. Time yourself, okay? I'll be honest, I hate practicing a lot for presentations, but it has to be done in order for you to be able to know, are you fitting into the time slot for which you were given? So make sure to time yourself and see, are you staying within your five minutes or are you going over by eight minutes? And if you're going over by eight minutes or three minutes or two minutes, Go back to your content, narrow it down, so that when you do get on the stage, you're being respectful of other people's time. Always be mindful of others, okay? So everybody prepared for their report to be given, and because other people went over, they didn't get to go. And what I tell you, from an audience standpoint, if I know you got five minutes, after the buzzer goes off, everything you're saying after that five minutes, I'm not paying much attention to anymore because now I'm just annoyed. I'm annoyed because you couldn't get your point across in the five minutes that you were given. And number two, you're being rude and other people are not gonna be able to go. So just wrap it up and go take your seat. So number two is eliminate filler words. Okay, so being a YouTuber or a new YouTuber, I should say, I have become very mindful of every time I say, uh, um, so, and what I try to do is pause. And so whenever I was at this conference this past week, I noticed uh, one of the people who were leading the meeting, they had a very bad habit of saying, um, uh, and it got to be so annoying. And what happens is, as an audience member, and maybe I was just more in tune to it, I was on the verge of just counting how many times was he going to say um and uh, and it gets very distracting. And But then one of the people who actually went over their time by 20 minutes, she actually did pretty good in not saying a lot of ums and uhs. And you could see she was deliberately pausing whenever a uh, filler word was about to come about, she would actually pause. So she had that done very well, but, but the part she didn't do very well was staying within her allotted time. So number two, you wanna eliminate filler words. And my advice for you in order to help you better do this is to just take pauses whenever you're actually thinking or feeling like you need to say a filler word. Number three, stay focused on the main point. 
most recently I've heard somewhere, so let the main thing be the main thing, okay? So know what your points or your highlights are, stick to the main thing, try not to go off on tangents as you're telling stories or as you're talking about your topic, stay on task. Signal your end, okay? So this was very interesting to me. Uh, so I like to say in conclusion or as I wrap up or in closing, those type things. And so that's very important because it's signaling to your audience that this is coming to a close and it's a trend transition moment. However, what I'm going to caution you is have one conclusion statement. Don't do like it is in church when the choir is singing and then they've ended the song and then they start back up again and then they start back up again. So whenever you say in conclusion or one final thing, let that final thing be the final thing. Don't come back and say, oh, and one more thing or one additional thing because now you've tricked the audience and people just don't like to be tricked, okay? People like to know what's coming and so if you're wrapping up and it's true your conclusion let your conclusion be the conclusion number four is engage your audience so I really like this one sometimes I talk with my hands sometimes I don't it depends on what setting I'm in so you want to make sure that you're keeping eye contact with folks in your audience and usually I like to scan the audience to find some friendly faces or some people I know and then at this one particular conference a couple of weeks ago I was leading a roundtable discussion and I did my thing where I'm looking for people I know or people who looks like they're engaging with me and I have eye contact with them well there was one man in the audience and I still remember him. He just had this stone hard face. And I'm like, oh my gosh, my content is really not landing with this dude. Like he is not laughing at my jokes. He's not nodding his head. He's not participating. Like this is not going over well. Well, you could internalize that and say, maybe I need to speed up so that I can go and sat down myself. Or you can say, I'm going to find somebody else in the audience to pull good energy from. What I want you to know though is after the roundtable discussion was over, this man was actually in line to speak with me to tell me how much he enjoyed my presentation and wanted my card. So I say all that to say, just because somebody in the audience isn't looking to you like they're friendly or that they're actually getting any enjoyment out of your message, don't let that sway you into rushing or thinking you're not doing a good job. It just may be their personality. Now, on the other hand, don't overdo your gestures. Don't overdo your eye contact. So if you're in an audience and you only see a couple of friendly faces, don't sit there and stare at that one person the whole entire time. It's very uncomfortable. I've been in situations like that because I try and show respect to the person who's presenting and I may be that friendly face. But if I'm the only friendly face, don't keep eye contact with me because I may want to look at my phone or look away. It gets very uncomfortable when somebody from the stage is always just staring at you and you're like, can you go and stare at some other folks? Okay, so try not to overdo the hand gestures and don't do the oh, and don't overdo the eye contact with one with one particular person. My final point on this subject of making your content engaging is please don't have a monotone voice. You know, and I, and I know why I made this video because all of these things culminated from this particular conference that I was at or this particular meeting I was at. One person that went over about 10 minutes, so now they're speaking for 15 minutes, had the most monotone, boring voice ever. So now I'm super annoyed because number one, you went over your five minute allotted time. Number two, your entire 15 minutes, you said butcher nothing. You could, probably could have got it done in two minutes. And number three, your voice is so monotone it was a bore ring okay so try and vary up your voice and I've noticed for me if I'm monotone or my voice isn't being varied it's because I'm just reading from a script or I'm trying to stay in guidelines with whatever my presentation is I prefer to have bullet points just like when I do my scripting so I'm I'm actually looking at a script over here which you probably won't be able to see, but it's not written out. It's just bullet points of what I want to cover because then I can more naturally and more authentically speak how I would speak to anyone if I was actually delivering this content. The final tip is prepare and rehearse. As I said earlier, I don't like to do a lot of preparation and a lot of rehearsal because then the content to me gets boring. And then when it is time for me to deliver it, I don't really have the passion to deliver it because I've gone through it about 40 or 50 times. And I don't like that. So I usually prepare and rehearse anywhere from three to five times, depending on where I'm actually presenting at. But whenever you do so, you're preparing yourself to better be able to deliver your points when you're going up to present. That makes you a little bit more confident because you know what's coming up in your script and you're more familiar with it. And it's 
is better able to land with your audience. And if you can, get feedback. I don't like rehearsing in front of people that I know and mainly because they don't really know what I'm talking about. And I also just don't want somebody who is not familiar with what I'm talking about to actually hear me as I rehearse. So I don't usually rehearse in front of people. I'll rehearse in front of a camera. Maybe I always like to rehearse in front of a mirror just so I can see my facial expressions and that kind of thing and how much hand gestures and things that I'm doing. Um, so my main point when it comes to being prepared and rehearse is just going to make you more confident when you actually get on the stage to actually present. And in conclusion, and I promise I'm only going to say in conclusion one time, for effective communication, you want to make sure that you're landing your content with not a lot of fluff. Remember the word brevity. You want to get your message across without a lot of unnecessary words, without going off on tangents. You want to be very mindful of the allotted time that you have been given. Be engaging by using appropriate hand gestures and appropriate eye contact. And know your material so that you can present it confidently and then take your seat. Let me know in the comments if you resonate with any of these or, or if any of these are pet peeves to you when other presenters don't do them or do them. Just let me know some feedback in the comments if you stuck around this long. As always, I appreciate you for watching. I hope you got something valuable out of this and stay tuned for our next video.